This is going to be a study on the subject of things you won't take with you to heaven or hell. If you'll turn to Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Number one, I'd like to point out that you will not take your material items with you to heaven or hell. The rich man had everything he could ever want. He was clothed in royal apparel, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. He was more worried about the physical things in this world than the eternal things. He didn't care about God or salvation. And James chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 says, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, sit here under my footstool. This is talking about people who give respect to people who have nice clothes, and then treating people like dirt who don't have nice clothes. And there are millions of upper-class, snobby, rich people who are lost and on their way to hell, and they will look down on somebody because of their clothes and their material items or their vile raiment. And you may have never thought about this, but there are people in nursing homes with slobber on their face in hospitals who can't even walk. There's people in hospitals that can't even walk and they don't have anything. Yet one day if they are saved... They're going up in a rapture and getting a new body. And the rich people with the finer things, if they reject the gospel, then they are lost and they're going to hell. And all those good clothes and fancy things will be left to someone else. And they will rust and moths will eat it and the thieves will take it. And then if it is still here, it will get burned up when Jesus Christ comes back in flaming fire. And there are people who think they're so good that they won't have anything to do with someone in nasty clothes or who doesn't have the finer things or who drives an ugly car. But if that ugly person with the ugly clothes is saved, they are a child of the king and they are royalty. And if you're saved, you're a son of God and you're on your way to heaven. Don't be discouraged by the men who live like the devil and get love from the sinful world. The rich man fared sumptuously Every day he had the world in his hands. He loved this present evil world. But Christians aren't of the world. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Uh, the rich man isn't going to take the fancy clothes to hell with him. He will be down there burning and screaming. And at the great white throne, he will stand before Jesus Christ, naked, clothed in nothing but the filthy rags of his own self-righteousness. Imagine waking up in hell after you pampered your flesh your entire life and people are so pampered. Uh, they got food when they want, water when they want, they can go anywhere they want, lay down when they want. But if they aren't saved, they will one day wake up in hell. And you need to get saved if you're not saved. Jesus Christ died, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe on that as your payment for sin. But your material items... They're not going to hell with you. Your material items won't be going with you to heaven. And why would you want them to? Who needs this corruptible junk that rusts and falls apart? There is no such thing as things falling apart in heaven. But number two, when you get to heaven, you won't take your misery. Luke sixteen twenty says, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, full of sores. So Lazarus is at the rich man's gate, and he's begging for food. And this poor man was a lot like people in the world today. They are in constant pain and misery. He was full of sores. If you've read the book of Job, Job had boils all over his body. Paul was beat with rods, and he was stoned to de death. Maybe you have something on you that causes you constant pain. This won't go down. This won't go up with you into heaven. When the beggar died and went into the heart of the earth in paradise, he didn't take those sores with him. Nothing disquieted him in paradise. 
In 1 Samuel 28, 15, Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? The witch of Endor brought up Samuel from paradise, back there in 1 Samuel 28. And when Samuel came up from paradise, he said, Why hast thou disquieted me? And this shows he was at peace, and nothing was bothering him in paradise. How much the more now? When to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When we die today as saints, we don't go to the heart of the earth. We go up to the third heaven because the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied. Revelation 21, 4 says, No more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Somebody said, Well, if heaven is so good and we are in misery here, then we should just kill ourselves. He said that is why teenagers are committing suicide because they think heaven is so good. But that's not Bible. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If you do some suffering down here, then the millennial kingdom and eternity will be even better. You'll get more rewards and rule over cities if you live for God and keep on going until you die. Committing suicide and taking an easy way out is ridiculous. Live for God while you're on this earth. You can't take your material items and you can't take your misery. But if you go to hell, misery awaits you. It is the place where God's anger is kindled. And number three, no more hunger. You're not going to take your hunger with you to heaven. Luke 16, 21 says, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked him his sores. So Lazarus is desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. He is outside of the gate begging the rich man for his food. And this guy wasn't like the guys that stand outside of Walmart for hours trying to get money. This guy was really poor. And maybe you're really poor. Maybe you're really hungry. And if you're saved, you're not going to take this hunger with you to heaven. Revelation seven sixteen and 17 says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This isn't true for the rich man. In hell he lifts up his eyes and he is thirsty. And if he's thirsty, he's probably hungry. If you reject the living water, which is Jesus Christ, then you'll beg for a drop of water on your tongue. But number four, if you go to hell, no more opening your eyes in the comfort of your own home. You can't take the comfort of home with you to hell. Luke sixteen twenty two and 23 says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell fire. Before he probably opened them, when he was on this earth, he probably opened them in a king-sized bed. And this bed was probably warm, and he was safe in the comfort of his own home. Now he's in a place prepared for the devil and his angels where he's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, where he can't get comfortable, where there's no rest day nor night, and you won't feel at home in hell because it wasn't prepared for you. He lifts up his eyes being in torments. And can you imagine getting homesick when you're in hell? And you'll never get to go home to your wife or your baby ever again. You'll never get to open the door of your house and be greeted by your dog ever again. Or see your child running up to you to greet you as you come in from work. No more mowing the grass or washing your car or relaxing on the couch. From now on, your eternal home is hell and you will burn as you remember how you had it made on this earth. You'll remember the hard times on this earth and how they don't compare to the horrors of hell. And the rich man goes from luxury to eternal pain. While Lazarus was carried and laid in Abraham's bosom in the heart of the earth, he went from the street begging for a place to eat, and now he's in a place of peace. 
and he went from a dirty makeshift bed on the ground to a place where he won't be disquieted anymore. And when you get to the third heaven after death, you won't ever have to open your eyes in this present evil world ever again. You'll open them up to the eternal comfort of heaven. Number five. If you go to hell, there's no more relief in hell. You can't take relief of pain with you to hell. In Luke 16, 24 and 25, it says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. When the rich man went to hell, he realized he would never get relief from pain. In this life, you can go through severe pain, but there is always hope of some kind of relief, maybe through medication. If you burn your hands, something cold will ease the pain. If you get something in your eye, you can wash it out with water. If you have something wrong on the inside of your body, you can have surgery. But in hell, you'll beg for a drop of water to cool your tongue, and there won't be any water. Luke 16, 26 says, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from this. So, in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ died, you had all the saints going to paradise on one side in the heart of the earth, and all the lost people going to hell on the other side in the heart of the earth. Between those two places was a great gulf fixed. And on top of there being no relief in hell, you may hear the sound of something that could give you relief and know that you can't ever get to it. The rich man may have heard water in the great gulf and been even more in agony and torment from hearing the water, and he is still there today. Thousands of years later, he's still down there burning, weeping, and wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Hell is eternal punishment for eternal sin against an eternal God, and you will burn for eternity if you deny Jesus Christ. One side of eternity has water, the other one doesn't. Revelation 22, 1 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. One side of eternity is peaceful, and the other side of eternity is torture. And number six, you can't take your loved ones to hell with you. Luke sixteen twenty seven and 28 says, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So the rich man wanted Lazarus to go and witness to his family. You may cause your family to go to hell, but when you get to hell and they get to hell, they're not going to be your family anymore. Did you know you will have no friends or family to fellowship with in hell? You'll never get to take your wife out ever again. You'll never get to talk to your wife ever again. If you die on your deathbed, the conversation you have with your wife before you slip off into eternity will be the last time you hear her voice. Your friends that you enjoy spending time with may go to hell, but they won't be your friends in hell. In hell, there is nothing but enemies. There is nothing but weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. If you're saved and go to heaven, when you die, then you will get to see all your saved loved ones that have passed on before you and the ones who pass on after you. You'll never have to miss them ever again. For the Christian, you don't take loneliness with you into eternity. You are accepted in the, in the beloved. You'll have friends and a family in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ will be in heaven and a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And number seven, no more persuading men to be saved. If you get to heaven, you won't have to talk someone into believing on Jesus Christ. Everyone is going to be the friend of Jesus Christ and worship Jesus Christ. And if you go to hell, you can't persuade anyone to be saved. If you go to hell as a dad, you can't go back up and tell your son that he needs to believe the gospel because he's going to burn down there with you. If you look at Luke sixteen twenty nine through 31, it says, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went up, one went unto them from the dead, 
they will repent. And he said unto him, If they not hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded the one rose from the dead. So or the rich man is wanting someone to come up from the dead and witness to his five brothers so that they don't come down to hell with him. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm witnessing to you, trying to get you to realize you need to be saved so that you don't have to go to hell. In hell, there won't be anybody asking you to be born again like there is now. There won't be anybody asking you to be born again by believing the gospel. No one will give you a gospel tract and nobody will tell you that Jesus loves you. You will forever be under the wrath of an almighty God. Hell is where the anger of God is kindled and you can't take another chance of salvation with you when you go to hell. If you live like the devil in front of your son and you die before he does, you'll never get to go back up and be a better influence. The rich man wanted somebody to rise from the dead and witness to his five brethren. But Abraham said they wouldn't be persuaded even if one did rise from the dead. And one does rise from the dead. That's Jesus Christ. And he still, they still don't believe. People still rejected Jesus Christ. When you go to heaven, you'll never have to beg anybody to be saved ever again. You'll be surrounded by other believers. You won't have to have a burden because everyone is right with God. And in heaven, you won't take the worry of your kids getting saved with you. No worries in heaven. If you're saved, then be happy and rejoice because you're going to heaven. If you're not saved, the best thing for you to do right now is get saved before it's entirely too late. Hebrews 9.27 says, and, it, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So you are going to die one day and you are going to face judgment. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The price to pay for sin is death. And not only a physical death, but a second death, where you will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20:14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And you deserve this because you have sinned against an almighty God. But there is good news. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. Romans 5, 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. Even though we sinned against an almighty God, He still sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus Christ is virgin born, He's sinless, and He is God in the flesh. He came down, God in the flesh, to die on the cross to pay for your sins because He loved you. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, as it says in Colossians 1.14. We need Jesus Christ to be our Savior because we are sinners. And if you would like to believe on him as your Savior, then do it now before it's too late. All it takes to be saved is for you to come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Him. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So don't put off salvation any longer.